I'm Lucy Edwards, Director of Client Success at PhD Studios. And today I'm at this magnificent home of Alan Dalton. Thank you for inviting us, Alan. Lucy, you're very welcome to be in our home. Thank you for being here. Alan Dalton is the Senior Vice President of Research and Development of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services and Home Services of America. Alan, you've been talking about value a lot. Uh, Realtor who is talking about, I'm so valuable. Uh, the brokerages, we are valuable and we bring value to you, to a realtor. Uh, but it means so many different things and different things for different people. Can we talk about it? Yes, Lucy, value is not going to be enough moving forward. Our last convention's theme was invaluable. That was Christy Budnick's theme. It's not enough, as I said, to be deliberately redundant, just to be valuable for a lot of different reasons. But speaking of value, see, the industry's greatest challenge is not image, it is value. When it comes to image, we couldn't be in better shape. We're prodigiously photoshopped as an industry. That's why sometimes I've said this in other forums, somebody will say, gee, Susan, nice to meet you, but I thought your daughter was coming, or gee, Alan, it's nice to meet you, but I thought your son was coming tonight, because we are prodigiously photoshopped. We've got a great image. We're also resplendently dressed. Uh, who dresses up on the weekends other than realtors? Also, we invented personal promotion along with Hollywood, so we've got a great image in terms of personal promotion. As you know, Lucy, we're in the age of ratings and reviews. We've been writing our own reviews for the past 75 years, and they're always glowing. You know that. And then parking garages are brimming with our BMWs, Lexuses, and a litany of other automobiles. So we don't have an image problem. We have a value problem, as I mentioned earlier, and that's what we have to address. And one of the ways we can be more valuable is in the way we communicate. I've researched this. Essentially, the industry defaults to only five or six words to describe every home in North America. In fact, the world. Isn't it amazing that everybody lives in the same home? Because they all get described the same way. Here are the six words. Your home is lovely, beautiful, charming, gracious, spacious, and elegant. And everybody that's got a nice property, it, they, ha they must live in the same house because all the ads say the same thing. You probably read it. Mm -hmm. Ever hear professionally landscaped? Yeah. How about this one, park-like setting? <laughs> that's why I created... Open floor plan. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I created Dalton's Distinctive Dialogue. I've got about 20 pages of more descriptive ways to narrate homes. People say, I don't sell real estate, I sell lifestyle. Everybody says that but you wouldn't know it in the way they communicate because most agents will devote more attention to when they write the ad than when they're communicating with the homeowner. Mm -hmm. Because the most important question you can ask, say to a homeowner is this, may I take a few moments to share with you the way I'd like to describe your home? That's the, that's the whole interview, that's the whole meeting, it's not even an interview, that's the whole presentation. Because it's all about the consumer. Sometimes realtors will be asked, well, what makes you different, Lucy? I always recommend that they say this, Lucy, rather than focusing on how I'm different, I'd rather focus on how we have to make your property different. You see, I don't compete against other agents here in Connecticut, but your home competes against other homes. I actually cooperate with all the other agents in the state, but your home doesn't cooperate, it competes. So the way that I'm different is how we're gonna do the marketing and the networking of your home to point out what's different about your home. See, we have to show greater value in terms of how we communicate. We have 99.9% .9 of realtors in the country that have actually used the word comps. Using the word comps is like saying to somebody, Lucy, let's take a look at some comparable children tonight. I brought some pictures. Oh, come on, they've got two arms and two legs. And as opposed to saying, let's take a look at properties which buyers will be evaluating at the same time they're evaluating your home. You can't have value if you're not communicating properly. You also can have value if you think the market determines the price. Every single textbook I've seen since I've been in real estate says the same thing, and they're all catastrophically wrong. And I don't mean to sound either pompous or pedantic. Here's what they all say. The market determines the price. Thank God the market doesn't determine the price. See, the market determines the price in stocks. If you were at work for E-Trade and you sold a million dollars of stock, maybe your fee would be $12 or $15. But how many real estate agents would be willing to accept a $20 commission for selling a million dollar home? I don't think we'd have any takers. But why, are they why would they deserve any more if the market determines the price? 
The market has never determined the price of what a home sells for. It only influences it. What determines it? The buyer, the buyer agent, the seller, the seller agent, the lender, the appraiser. But these aren't issues of semantics, Lucy. If a realtor goes through their entire career thinking that the market determines the price, they're eviscerating their value. They're internalizing low value. They're stepping on their own ear hose. They're reducing their significance. So too, if a realtor goes through their entire career thinking the only reason a home doesn't say is because it's overpriced, that's also catastrophic. There's only one reason a home doesn't sell. That's because of ineffective marketing because price is part of marketing. Mm -hmm. These aren't semantical issues. We have no value when we have these universally accepted uh, prisms. Moreover, if somebody is still making what's called a listing presentation, we still have coaches out there actually teaching agents how to make listing presentations. There's not a homeowner in society that ever wants to have a listing presentation. They all want marketing proposals, but these aren't just like pithy changes. These aren't just different slogans. Or This isn't semantics because thoughts lead to words, actions, behavior, character, in destiny, and if somebody's making a listing, pre if somebody actually thinks they have a listing presentation tomorrow night, what do you think they're going to make? A listing presentation. A listing presentation is about the agent. A marketing proposal is about the homeowner. A listing presentation is performative. A marketing proposal is collaborative. A listing presentation is to educate. A marketing proposal is to activate. So there's hundreds of changes that we have to evolve to to really discover and then manifest our greater value. Because to me, no one has any value as a marketing person if they think the only reason a home doesn't sell is because of price, is if they have no influence, or if they think the market determines the price, if they're talking about comps, as opposed to saying, let's take a look at properties which buyers will be evaluating at the same time they're evaluating your home. Because 100% of the income of realtors in any brand and every brokerage is based on how they're communicating off and online. Mm -hmm. And that's why communication is inextricably interwoven with value and especially perceived value. Thank you, Alan. I couldn't say it any better. And uh, I greatly appreciate that you are separating marketing strategy with listing presentation. That is definitely two completely different directions that agents should be thinking about.